everyone, it's Nina. Thanks for joining me today for a new tutorial. We're going to be looking at five unique ways for adding seed beads to your cards. Seed beads are something that are really fun to incorporate into your card projects, and I'm going to be showing you some unique ways and also a few traditional ways that seed beads can be used to create texture, shimmer, and fun to your cards. So I'm going to start off first by creating a traditional shaker card. I've created a frame for my shaker using the Impression Obsession Sea Life Frame Die. I'm going to build this as I would a normal shaker card. So I have a piece of acetate behind the frame, and I'm also creating a shaker well with two layers of foam tape. Now inside, I'm going to add some sequins, but this is where the seed beads are gonna come into play. These mermaid sequins look amazing, but to fill this shaker even more and let you see the background behind this shaker, I'm going to fill it even further with seed beads. These are some blue summer sky seed beads from Studio Cadia. I like to put a piece of acetate as the backing for my shaker cards because this doesn't stick to the sequins and the seed beads. Paper sometimes has a tendency to have a little bit of static cling. Whereas the acetate is a great smooth surface that allows all of your shaker bits to slide around and create a really nice and fun shaker. Now the fun part about seed beads being your shaker filler is that they add so much sound to your shaker cards. It really creates a fun and beautiful effect and you can see that it fills in your shaker card so gorgeously. I've colored all of these elements on this card using some watercolors, and these fish are also part of the Sea Life frame die from Impression Obsession. There's some Studio Cadia bubbles also on the card, and I used the Simon Says Stamp Good Vibes sentiment die to finish off this scene. Next up, I'm going to show you another version of a shaker card. However, the unique thing about this shaker card is that it is over top of a stamped image. And this is where seed beads are so perfect for this technique because they're not going to hide the image that is underneath. I'm gonna start off by creating this background panel that's going to be the colored butterflies in my shaker card. I'm arranging the butterflies exactly as I want them and I'm gonna stamp them onto that white cardstock which I'll end up coloring with Copic markers. I'm going to take a second panel, however, in the exact same size of that first panel that I stamped, and this is going to be the top layer of my card. So this is where the windows are going to be for our shaker. I'm just gonna stamp those butterflies really quickly, down and dirty, I don't need anything fancy because I'm gonna use this as a guide to cut out the butterflies. But the reason we stamped both of those at the same time is that the butterflies that we're going to color are going to now match up perfectly with the butterflies we're cutting out of this blue panel. So they're now exactly aligned in the exact same place and you're going to see those butterflies through these windows perfectly. I'm going to start building my shaker card now. So I'll add adhesive to the backside of this front panel, this blue piece, and I'll put a layer of acetate over top of that. This acetate is going to hold all those seed beads in place, of course, and then I'll add a bunch of foam tape to the back side. I used two layers, and you'll also notice that I sectioned off each of the butterflies so that they each have their own well for the seed beads. Now when you do this, you wanna make sure that you put the seed beads in in just a very thin layer. You don't wanna cover this whole thing and you don't wanna to have tons of seed beads in here because what we want is just a slight coating that's going to give that really fun shaker effect but it's not going to cloud over the image. So when this shaker card isn't being shook, you still see most of the images, but when you shake it, you get that gorgeous, shimmery, iridescent color from these iridescent seed beads over top of the butterflies, and it looks so pretty. Again, I'll sandwich those seed beads that I have inside of my little shaker wells with some acetate. We can just simply turn this shaker panel over and layer it over top of the stamped butterflies, and now we have these shaker panels in the exact same place covering over the butterflies perfectly. I decorated this shaker card with many of the different images and some sentiments that were in the Beautiful Day stamp set that these butterflies are from, and there are some cute little accents in the background too with some gel pens and confetti sequins. Now we're gonna step up those seed bead techniques now, and we're going to create some really fun embellishments with them. The first technique I'm going to share is creating some fun little sprinkles on an ice cream cone. 
I'm going to be using the Build a Cone stencil from Brutus Monroe and I used a variety of different oxide inks to ink blend the different pieces of the ice cream cone and create a really fun stack of colors. I ended up ink blending a total of four scoops of different colors of ice cream and once my blending was finished I'm going to realign the ice cream scoop stencil over top of the final ice cream scoop that we have on our stack. I'll mask off the areas and I'm going to bring in some reinker. This is Vintage Photo Distress Ink Reinker. I'm using some light and fluffy modeling paste. This paste is basically like marshmallow fluff. It is so creamy and fluffy. It makes the most perfect fudge icing to put on top of this ice cream cone. So I'm going to mix that up and literally you look like you could eat this, but I definitely would not want to. But it looks so good enough to eat and I'm going to start blending this paste over top of my ice cream cones and I'm going to carefully work it making it look like it's like a hot fudge sauce on top of the ice cream. This basically is like frosting a cake. It feels like frosting a cake because you're basically moving this around and smoothing it out getting it into the shape you like. I worked very carefully to make the shape that I wanted and I'm not pushing too hard because I do want to keep a little bit of dimension with this paste. While it's still wet, I'm going to bring in some iridescent rainbow seed beads and sprinkle those over top of the fudge. Because this paste is wet, it's going to hold those seed beads and it's going to give these seed beads a place to adhere to. Now, I do want to make sure I pat these in a little bit because if they're just sitting on top, they're not going to adhere to that paste very easily. But if we just smush them into the paste, that's going to embed them and that'll hold them down really nicely. I'll also use those seed beads to further embellish the ice cream cone by adding a few here and there to create the effect of sprinkles. Once this dries, the effect looks so cool. We've got this really fun fudge sauce along the top and some seed beads sprinkled around to create the fun sprinkles. It's really colorful and a great way to be able to use your seed beads to create some fun embellished designs on your cards. Another fun way to use seed beads is to add them in as an embellishment over top of a die cut. Kind of like how we did with the ice cream cone, this time however we're going to cover the entire die cut shape. Instead of using them as just a random embellishment, we're going to literally cover and color these butterflies with the seed beads. So I've die cut a bunch of our Adeline butterfly die from some colored cardstock. I'm using some light tack tape to hold these butterflies in place as I work with them and I'm covering each one with a layer of glossy accents. The glossy accents is going to not only create a dimensional effect but it's also going to be a great adhesive to hold these seed beads in place so they're not going to go anywhere. I'll sprinkle a few of those seed beads into that wet glossy accents and then after I've added the seed beads I'll also bring in just a little bit, uh, just a slight tap touch of the Lawn Fawn Prisma Glitter. The Prisma Glitter is really fine and delicate and gives a really beautiful shimmery effect. I'll show you this once again. We just add the glossy accents over top of the butterfly and then bring in those seed beads and sprinkle on quite a few of them. When you have the seed beads on there, then just add in a little bit of glitter or you can leave the seed beads as is and not add any glitter. Now these butterflies are just a single layer of paper. So this is 100 pound cardstock. These are Gina K and Simon Says Stamp cardstocks. And as you can see, once this dries, this will curl the die a little bit because we've got a lot of adhesive and embellishment on here. But I knew it was gonna do that and I wanted that because these are butterflies and it gives them a little bit more of a dimensional look. However, if you're using a different shape or you don't want it to be curled, you can stack a few die cuts together before adding the glossy accents and the beads and that'll give you a flat embellishment once it dries. So there's two options for creating these dimensional embellishments, but I really loved the curled effect that you get when you use just a single layer for these butterflies. I feel it gives them a more lifelike look. So I finished off this card by adding these butterflies onto a colorful panel that I had watercolored, and I also used a bunch of colorful butterflies that I die cut with the flickering butterfly die. And there are some sentiments from the Yes You Can Simon Says Stamp and CZ Designs stamp set. Okay, one more technique we're going to feature today and that is filling in an inlay die cut design with seed beads. This is really fun because it gives your inlay die cut designs a whole new look and it gives your element a lot of texture. 
So this card, I had cut an inlay die cut with our hibiscus frame die and a variety of Tonic Studios glitter card stocks. It looks beautiful as is, but by adding in some layers of glossy accents inside each of these petals, that's going to give us an adhesive layer that is perfect for adding the seed beads into. I'm going to be using this shimmering silver seed beads from Pretty Pink Posh and start sprinkling these into that glossy accents that's still wet. It's okay if it covers over the outlines of the hibiscus frame because I'm going to bring in my craft pick and just push those seed beads back into place. I'm going to push them into the petals so that way they're not hanging over the outlines. And then once this dries, this dries into a beautiful clear finish that showcases those beautiful seed beads inside of the hibiscus frame and gives it a really dimensional and textured look. It also catches the light really beautifully and it adds just a whole unique element to an inlay die cut card and steps it up so it has a really awesome finish. I hope all of these different techniques that I've shared with you today in using seed beads has inspired you to try pulling seed beads into your next card projects. You can head on over to the Simon Says Stamp blog and thanks so much for tuning in and spending some time with me today. I'll be back again very soon with more inspiration for you. And until next time, I hope you have a great day. Bye.